Neil, thanks for joining me today. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, Neil, I'd like to start the conversation with uh, the $100 million financing that was recently announced by MedRelief. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is it that you're planning to do with all of that money? Uh, well, we, we've, as we've said, uh, we're raising money to be, just be opportunistic and strategic. We're always keeping our eyes open for opportunities and we will very likely be using some of it to build out additional capacity. Okay, so is it safe to presume that from that statement that you are uh, sort of acquisition minded? Uh, I think we're always looking at opportunities sure. and as things come up, we evaluate them okay. on a case by case basis. So this so isn't sure. necessarily for organic expansion at this point. Uh, part of it is, part certainly, of it is. yeah. Okay, great. Now, uh, MedRelief has always stood out in my mind as one of the top companies in the ACMPR game, if for it's nothing nice else. Hear. Well, it's your own accomplishment. You, you have reported uh, achieving a production rate of 300 grams per year per square foot. Right. And is that something you attribute directly to the fact that you're growing it in a closed space as opposed to a greenhouse, for example? Well, certainly um, yields per square foot in a greenhouse are somewhat less than indoor. That's mm -hmm. a standard known issue. Mm -hmm. um, the average indoor, however, yield per square foot is somewhere around 150 grams per square foot on average. Mm. Um, and that's from third party verified data. So we're about 2x what is normally expected of an indoor growing operation, right. um, which has in large part enabled us to you know, have the financial performance that mm -hmm. we've had. Interesting, yeah. So you're one of the leaders in terms of financial performance and obviously that speaks to sort of your vision and your preparation and posi positioning within the ACMPR market. So I'm, I'm encouraged to ask you, where do you see the market evolving as the new uh, recreational rules come into effect on July 1st, 2018, if they do so on time? Yes, it's a big if. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's fairly well understood there will be a recreational market in Canada if it's July or August or whenever it might be, it's coming. Um, there's certainly an evolution in the market that's gonna take place. There's a lot n of new license holders that have been introduced or permitted in the last uh, number of months. So things will be interesting. There'll be some competition, but I think many of those new entrants have quite a road to go still before they mm -hmm. can reach a production level that will really enable them to fill shelves at a retail level on a mass scale. Right. Um, so there's a handful of us that have that scale today. And I think you'll see us by and large, you know, filling those shelves in the earliest days for sure. Sure. So is your production rate now sufficient that you could supply a significant portion of the anticipated demand of the recreational users, assuming they all abandon the black market upon legalization. Well, so that's a big assumption, right? That everyone will abandon the black market and on day one immediately come to the new legal recreational world. Um, that's probably a f too far of a stretch or a really mm -hmm. optimistic, rosy perspective on things. Uh, I mean, you just have to look at Ontario as an example. There's only going to be 40 stores, for example, when they say that the ultimate demand and need will be hundreds of stores. Sure. So the demand will probably not be there uh, day one in terms of all of the people moving over. Um, but we do have capacity. We do have product. We've been building up inventory in anticipation of filling retail channels. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we, we expect to be a major player in uh, in the adult use market for sure. Sure. Okay. So some companies have made moves like a, an alliance with a celebrity, and you know everybody's got these different approaches to the recreational branding <clears throat> res relative to the medical branding. And certainly, Med Relief implies more of a medical focus. So are you sure. looking at? <clears throat> sort of carving off a recreational brand? Yes, yeah, so we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes on developing uh, a recreational brand portfolio of our own and then product portfolios under each of those brands to go after specific segments of the recreational market that we believe we can perform well in. Mm -hmm. um, the metric that we benchmark ourselves on is really relative market share, not overall market share. So okay. if we enter a specific segment of the market, we want to be a dominant player there. Mm -hmm. And we've really designed our brand portfolio around doing that successfully. So as the, re the adult use market becomes a little more clear in terms of who are actually gonna be the retailers, what's the pricing gonna look like, the taxation regime gonna look like, uh, you know, we'll unveil these brands publicly and, you know, people will start to become familiar with them. Sure. 
Okay, um, one, of the, one of the things that is uh, synonymous with med relief, and not to be sounding like I'm blowing, blowing smoke, but it's to some degree I am, is the quality and the reliability of the consistency of the quality of med relief's product. And so quality is an interesting issue, I find, when you're in discussion with the cannabis industry, because for one sort of coterie of the industry, quality is all about potency. Mm -hmm. And for other segments, uh, in the recreational side, it's more about a, a combination of potency with flavor and throat feel and, a, and more of a sort of a connoisseur type of approach. And then on the medical side, quality refers to the reliability of, you know, the things like dosage and consistency of product along with whatever else might be in the final product. So right. how does the layperson who's not within the industry gauge quality? It's a very good question, um, especially in light of the proposed regulations and how and the restrictions that may be placed on the producers in terms of branding and advertising. Um, so if you can imagine walking into a brand new cannabis retail store and you're faced with hundreds of products, to your point, how do you determine which one you want to buy? Exactly. Um, and so the way we approach quality at Medrelief uh, is really coming at it from two separate angles. So um, on the medical side, we view it as more of an objective um, analysis, right? So um, we send our products out to the lab to be tested before we obviously sell them. Mm -hmm. uh, and we get objective measurements of quality, we feel, from that, which are the consistency of the potency, the actual potency levels. Uh, in our case, from a production standpoint, the yields that we obtain on a per harvest basis, and of course the bio burden on the product. So is it contaminated or not? What are the levels of the external matter on the plant that should or should not be there? That's an objective measurement of quality that we focus on very carefully. Mm -hmm. On the other side, which more, tilts more to the adult use side of the market, is this more subjective, sure. which as you alluded to. So the taste, the smell, when you open the container, what kind of feeling do you get? Mm -hmm. um, those are the more subjective, more wine mm -hmm. sort of similar uh, characteristics. And on that front as well, we also focus um, and because we grow indoors, we feel we can control all the inputs that going, go into growing a healthy plant, which ultimately leads to a very strong product uh, in, the, in the output. And so on that benchmark, for example, I, I, I guess uh, one of the leading evaluators of, of the more subjective elements of the product is Lyft Cannabis mm -hmm. here in Canada. So they're like the Michelin guide of sure. cannabis, if you will. Uh, they give out awards every year. Uh, we've consistently had products that have ranked in the tops of those awards. And in fact, this year, a couple of weeks ago, we were just the most awarded licensed producer of all. Uh, we won 10 awards. Most of our major products won first place finishes. Uh, and we were also awarded the number one licensed producer of the year. So hmm. from a subjective standpoint, we seem to be doing quite well with the general public. And on right. the medical side, our products and the consistency of those products seems to resonate really strongly with the medical community. Okay, Neil, that's great. Let's leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time or so and see how you're making out. Thanks for That'll joining me today. Thank you.